Today's Seattle Times, Friday, March 16th, 2012. I want to go on the record that this is one of the greatest newspapers I have ever read. It is a keeper. I want to keep this newspaper. It is why newspapers should stay alive. This is one of the most entertaining issues of any newspaper that I have ever read. Seattle Times. Now, let's start with page one. On page one, there is absolutely no news. I knew Afghans were fucked. I knew that fish were dying. I knew that Boeing sometimes makes money and sometimes doesn't make money. And I knew that those assholes in Arizona were going to pass some stupid law against birth control. None of this is news. I do not care about any of this. But then we get to page two. Page two, there's birthdays, and it says rapper actor Flavor Flav is 53. Really? Flavor Flav is 53? <laughs> that is news. But then, even better, <laughs> news A3, a family's bitter battle over Jim Thorpe's soul. Now, I knew that Jim Thorpe was a Native American who was one of the world's greatest Olympic athletes. What I did not know was that at his funeral, his ex-wife showed up with a casket and a hearse and went into the funeral and said, hey, this body is too cold. And she had guards with her who grabbed the corpse and stole it and put it in the hearse and she drove away, leaving everyone at the funeral going, what the hell just happened? And what just happened was she stole the body and drove around the U.S. for months trying to figure out a way to make money off of this corpse and to uh, exploit her dead husband's body. So she ended up apparently in Pennsylvania, where there was this town going bankrupt, and she said, would you like Jim Thorpe's body? And they said, well, sure, I guess. And she said, what will you give me if I give you Jim Thorpe's body? And they said, we will change the name of our town to Jim Thorpe. So, Jim Thorpe's body has been interred in Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania for quite a long time, 50 years, 59 years, when suddenly, United States government passes a law saying that all museums across the land that have the interred remains of Native Americans must return these interred remains to the Native American tribes so that they can have proper burials in Indian burial grounds. This sounds okay to me. So, of course, Jim Thorpe's living relatives have said, hey, city of Jim Thorpe, give us back the body of our grandfather so that we can bury it where it belongs. And guess who opposes this? You won't be able to guess who opposes this. It is opposed by Michael Safranco, the mayor of Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. Now that's what I call burying the lead because to me what's interesting about this is that Jim Thorpe has a mayor? I did not know Jim Thorpe had a mayor. I wonder what Jim Thorpe would think of the fact that there's a guy named Michael Sofranco who calls himself the mayor of Jim Thorpe. I personally would like to have a mayor. And uh, someday I hope to meet the mayor of Michael Bear and ask him a few questions. But that is nothing, nothing, believe me, nothing compared to page A4 of today's Seattle Times where we have the misplaced foot ends earless bunny's fame. Yes, apparently a genetically mutant bunny was born in Germany, and this became big news in Germany, where he is rightfully the most famous bunny, and all these photographers showed up to take pictures of it, and the bunny hid underneath some, uh, some uh, straw, and a photographer backed up and stepped on the bunny, and now that bunny is dead. Now, what is interesting about this story? Well, first of all, why didn't the bunny hear the photographer go beep, beep, beep when he backed up into him? And the answer is because this bunny was born without ears. But most importantly, Germany is performing genetic experiments on bunnies? As a Jew, <clears throat> I am not really uh, 
I'm not comfortable with Germany performing genetic experiments on anything, and I would like to know whether this bunny was Jewish. And how do you tell if the bunny is Jewish? Were they, were they feeding him pork? I need to know. Once again, they buried the lead. And right next to it, we've got schools who get to opt out of pink slime beef because apparently there's this stuff that has always been called lean, finely textured beef. But somebody decided to change the name of it to pink slime and suddenly people don't want it anymore and they're trying to get it out of schools. And there's what it looks like. And I got to say, I agree that it should not be mandatory to eat in schools, but very obviously they should take this stuff and fry it in oil and put it in bags and sell it as pink slime deep fried in oil and they will make a goddamn fortune. I mean, this is America after all. Continuing on to page five of today's Seattle Times, we have the sex-deprived male flies go for the booze. This is one of the most interesting scientific experiments that I have ever heard of. I marvel at the minds that thought of this experiment. What they did was they took a bunch of male flies and a bunch of female flies and they let half of the male flies in with the female flies to fuck their brains out. And then they took out those male flies and they put in the other male flies and the female flies now refuse to go anywhere near these male flies because they had had their fill. They were not ready to uh, continue with any sort of serious relationship. So then they separated the male flies and they put them all together into a room where there was two kinds of food. One food, just normal food, and the other food with booze. And it turns out <laughs> that the flies that did not get laid ate more of the booze-laden food than the flies that did get laid. They have now proven this scientifically. Now, I don't know why this is news, but I do know why this should be the next Pixar film. Pixar, what is wrong with you? Why have you not made this into a movie? I can picture it right now, the fly sitting there at the bar, talking to the bartender. Oh, God damn, you wouldn't believe it. They let me loose in this room with 100 female flies, and not one of them will come anywhere near my dick. God damn, I recommend calling this movie Waiter, there's a fly in my booze. Pixar, get out of here. And of course on page six, we've got Dog on the Car Roof Tail finds new life for Romney's critics because it turns out that once upon a time, Mitt Romney put his dog on a car. Until such time as they find proof that Obama put his car on a dog. This is going to be bad for Mitt Romney. And that concludes our tour of... Uh, front section of today's Seattle Times. Thank you, Seattle Times, for being so boundlessly entertaining, and I want to thank you once again for moving Doonesbury to the news section instead of the comic book section. I mean, today's Doonesbury is just so politically incisive that I don't know what I would have done if I had had to read it anywhere in the vicinity of Peanuts.